boom, boom. That's a quote from Baldrick, Blackadder the Fourth. Excellent series. Welcome back, crafters. Today we are talking about explosions, or at least the aftermath of explosions. We're going to be looking at craters. Now, craters are an absolutely brilliant terrain piece. They are so generic across so many games. You go from medieval, you are starting to get artillery brought in. You go for any of the world wars, lots of explosions going on there. Science fiction, obviously, if you're a 40k player, loads of big bombs. And even going back to things like um, classic Warhammer or Age of Sigma or whatever it's called now, dwarves have artillery and there's plenty, and I think the, the Imperials do as well. Loads of scope for it. And they are so generic across so many scales. What is a hand grenade at 28mm scale would be the equivalent of a tank shell crater down at 5mm scale. A tank shell crater at 28mm? is probably something that has been uh, dropped by artillery or a dive bomber if you're looking at something like 172nd, the, the classic AFIX stuff. So, you cannot go wrong with craters. I'll show you how to make them, or at least I'll show you how to make the basic template for them. The only thing that will be different between my model and your model is going to be some of the surrounding foliage and detail because that's going to fit in with your board game. Now, before we get started, the first thing we need to do is prep one of our materials that we're going to be using. And I have here some old plastic packaging that I am going to be using as a tray. Because I'm going to be mixing up essentially the equivalent of some concrete. Now, for that, what do we have? Well, first of all, I want some builder sand in there. Second, I have, when it comes out some wall filler. Now, you want the powdered stuff rather than the ready mixed because we want this essentially to lie quite flat. The next thing I'm going to add is an amount of PVA glue. Let's see if I can get some out. I think I need to refill my tub. And we're just gonna use this as an extra binding agent And then, soapy water. And what we want is, start mixing that all through enough so that it makes a flat sheet at the bottom of your tree. We're going to need a bit more of that. Get that all mixed through. get rid of any lumpy bits. Just add a wee bit more sand to that. Give it a good tap. You probably want it to a depth of maybe three or four mil. And then any of the larger bubbles if you can just pop them because we were using soapy water so you do expect some of that and that can be put off to one side to dry that's going to be at least an overnight job so make sure that you prepare that in advance now obviously the next thing we want is a base for the crater and that's going to be round now CDs are an ideal base for this kind of thing however you might find that that's a little bit on the large side. So I'm not going to go for that. I'm instead going to use some scrap plastic packaging that I've reclaimed from a box. And I'm just going to draw around my jar. So I've got a circle. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Let's face it, craters aren't normally that obliging. This can be cut out with a pair of scissors. Now the reason why I'm using thin plastic packaging is because I don't want the same kind of raised up area 
that you would get from something like an MDF base, plus the fact MDF is a pin in the posterior to actually cut out in a circle, unless you've got power tools and things like that. So, yeah, don't, don't go down that track. There we go, one circular base. Next off, we're going to do a little bit of hot glue gun work. So, we are going to make up the banks of our crater using hot glue. Now, I'm having a few problems with my hot glue gun, which I'm going to have to rectify, probably going to have to buy another one, which is why I'm pushing it from the end. However, what we are going to do, that elevated crater rim, we are going to make out of hot glue. Now, the reason we are doing that is twofold. One, it is very, very quick to make a rim up using this stuff. And I'm going to make a double circle like that. And then just give that a chance to dry. It's a bit sparse around that side. Give that a chance to cool off. And then do another one on the inside. And it doesn't matter if you go over a little bit or there are some bits that are uneven. Because that's basically just the way the ground has broken with the explosion. Allow that to set. Always helps. Yep. Yeah. And then one final ridge around the top just to give it ample height there we go okay so we've got a reasonable height crater now that back edge the the edge away from the explosion i'm just going to do a wee bit more work and i'm just going to smooth that down a little bit just using the tip of the glue gun just to draw it back and down and you'll see it's starting to come out basically we're sculpting with hot glue which is something that I love doing and you're going to take it almost out to the edge I need a reload there you're not taking it quite to the edge but you're taking it almost to the edge so you want as much but not quite all of that distance between the crater rim out to the edge covered as you can so you've now got a, a, a reasonable sort of slope at the back end don't you hate don't you hate stringy bits on hot glue okay turn that off because we're done with it and just hold it flat and bring that in the camera shot so as you can see it is already looking like a crater you may be wondering about my choice of materials now the reason why I'm using plastic as opposed to card is because the next stage is going to be using a reasonable amount of PVA glue and PVA glue does have that ability to warp, it contracts, and it'll lift the edges on you, okay? Um, I also wanted something very thin so that it could be essentially placed and meld in with the terrain rather than having the, um, the, the upraised edge that MDF does. However, one thing about using plastic is that with the heat of the hot glue gun, it can deform it ever so slightly. Now, there's a couple of ways we can deal with that. First of all, hot glue is quite pliable, so if you do have an edge that is just ever so slightly upright, you can, realistically, just bend it back into shape. And that is the method that I am going to use for this one. That is looking... Now that one's up. 
give it a good bend. Just check to make sure I'm happy with the flatness. That edge. Yeah, that's flat enough. There is another method that you can use in which I will show you in another video where we're going to be working with plastics a little bit more to add detail and you can dip it for about 5-10 minutes in a bowl of hot water it makes everything a little bit more malleable certainly it does with the glue and then you can just press it flat and press it down we're not going to do this with this one because it is essentially close enough and creators are markers that become terrain okay now back to the tried and trusted method of using PVA and a tissue paper because hot glue does have a habit of not taking a PVA coating when we're trying to attach stuff to it that is why I am going to put a tissue paper coating over the top of it it also certainly in terms of the crater makes it um, a little bit more rounded and not so and, and not so, such a stark edge that you will have got from the hot glue so this is just neat PVA and I put a tissue paper tissue down or a, a kitchen towel down and I'm using neat just to make sure that it does add here Okay. tissue straight over the top I'm just patting it down gently on the top and this is very watered down PVA and I'm just applying that just to get the tissue paper to expand and go out onto the sides of the crater and the thing is you can actually see <coughs> because the tissue does drop down so remarkably exactly where the edge of your piece is and we are just going to use the brush and draw it all of the lines into the center don't worry too much if you've got a bit of a crease because you can use the end of your brush to just pat that down make it slightly less noticeable and we're going to be adding um, a texture coat on top of that and then around the edges like so just draw them up and then around the outside drawing it down and away from the center and there you have it so this stage now needs to dry properly which is realistically going to be an overnight job unless you are using a hair dryer which I'm not going to break out tonight um, and then simply trim around the edges with a pair of scissors you can see quite clearly where the, the edge of the plastic is trim around get rid of the excess tissue paper on the back if you need to and then we move on to texturing it tomorrow now I should say at this point that if you're mass producing them or you're in a hurry there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking that um, tissue paper coated one and just giving it a quick coat of sand, slap some paint on, done deal, it is a crater. It'll sit on your tabletop and anybody looking at it at a glance will say there's a crater. Okay, carrying on, the more advanced, the more deluxe, the, the one with a, a little bit more detail that's what we're going on to now so dried overnight trimmed cleaned 
nice and round, looks like a crater and the tissue paper has sort of like smoothed over all of those you know really harsh joins with the hot, hot glue and given us a nice surface to be able to um, glue other things onto and paint and things like that. That can go to one side for the time being. And our concrete mix has dried. Now, uh, let me get a piece of paper to work on. Do, do, do. There we are. And we just want to break this stuff out. All like so. Yeah, a bit more. There's more in there, but there's. Oh, no, those bits have come out quite nice and easy, so we'll have them as well. All right, that can be cleaned up later. So, the plan. That is the top side. You can tell from all the bubbles. We want the other side. All right. And what we are going to do is use this to decorate the rim around the edge so an explosion has happened in the middle, it has created a crater and it has pushed up the uh, surrounding ground, terrain, whatever you want to call it. So we are going to apply slabs around the edge to make it look like that. So what we want to do is find, oh that's a nice thin piece. All right, and we just want to break off some pieces, probably quite narrow pieces, maybe a bit narrower than that. And I will get on with that and then we'll decorate the outside of the rim. So I've got a nice selection here and we're going to apply them. Straight PVA small brush because I don't want to go too overboard and I'm just getting some glue around the outer edge of the crater and I'm being quite liberal with it and then we start dropping our pieces on I'll carry on and get this done and you can see what it looks like after this stage. As you can see, we've got the crater ring formed. Now, normally I would, in most cases, I would say let that stage dry and then we'll carry on to the next part. However, because of the nature of the piece, I'm not going to do that because I still wanted to make take advantage of the um, glue that is still active around the rim because that was, it, it was, you know, it, it's still wet. Um, so what we're now going to do is decorate the inside of the crater and blend a little bit around the sides as well and in between those pieces of earth that have been thrown up. So for that, I have pre-prepared some thinned down PVA. In fact, I'll just get a piece of paper under here. Thin down PVA, water, a little bit of detergent, you know the mix. And I am going to use a number two grade basing material, builder sand in my case, because we don't want the stuff that's inside the crater to be too fine. There are going to be clods of earth there. I'll just get a good amount in there. And make sure you get right up the rim and under those clods of earth that have been, or those sections of earth that have been thrown up. Okay, that's on there. And now we want to blend it a little bit. So just get some on the back end, and you can see that one moving, which shows you that the um, the glue underneath is still wet. All right, just get it around that back end. And we're going to use that builder sand basically to blend 
those thrown up pieces down into the the good still firm ground so all the way around and it doesn't matter if you um accidentally splodge a, a bit of glue where you don't want to because at the end of the day it has been an explosion there is going to be debris of various kinds being thrown up all over the place so there isn't realistically a mistake that you can make with this wherever you put scatter or rubble or anything like that it is going to look like it has had an explosion almost there but I am deliberately not going too far up onto the top of those raised area of ground because we really do want those to stand out that by my reckoning is done I think get the builder sand on make sure you cover it completely And now that stage can be left to dry. Just remember, waste not, want not. If you don't get round to making a whole load of craters and you've still got some of this stuff left, there is absolutely no reason why it cannot be smashed up and just added straight into one of your higher grade um, material ground cover blends. Um, and that kind of stuff, I will be perfectly honest, would be ideal in block form for industrial waste there we are so this is the stage we are at ground cover on most of it one thing that I should point out the very reason why we added sand to the mix in the first place was so that on this side because sand tends to sink to the bottom of the mix, leaving the, um, the, the plaster up at the top. It does mean that you already have texture on all of those pieces, so you don't need to, to recover them with anything else. That is ready essentially for a paint job. At this point, this is where you need to make a decision. How are you going to finish this off? What kind of paint scheme are you going to be using? Which of your battlefields are you going to add this to or use it with? Now, if you've only got one kind, <laughs> dead easy. I can't show you all of the different combinations. I will be honest, I was originally going to do this for my science fiction terrain. So it was going, I was going to finish it off by putting um, builder sand all around the edge, get it all right out, completely covered, give it a coat of black, give it a, give it a dry brush grey, it would have been done. However, it would look boring. So, I am going to do more craters for that type of terrain. I will show you one from a standard grassy battleground. So to that end, let me get some protective paper in place. I've already made up a batch of earth colour and we are just going in fact I'll use a larger brush and we are just going to make sure that is watered down and get it dabbed all over and I am I'm not rather doing anything with the um, the very edges because I am going to flock coat those I'll get on with this painting and get it flocked and you can see the finished result. And there good friends is another piece of terrain to add to our collection. Nice and generic, dirt cheap, gotta love it. As ever if you have enjoyed this video and find the content of some use please feel free to share amongst friends or fellow hobbyists do hit the like and subscribe thing it always gives me a bit of an impetus to continue making these videos 
and I'm getting up to the times a little bit now um, you can also find the details for Instagram and Twitter down below I'm going to be a little bit active on those probably just to throw out ideas and mull things over and maybe even show you some behind the scenes pictures of what is going on in upcoming videos so feel free to follow those if you want if you don't eh, that's up to you anyway thank you for watching i'll catch you next time